Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the Good Samaritan. People love not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that need to change. In last week's parable, Forgiving from the Heart, we learned that it's not how many times we forgive a person, but whether or not we have been able to forgive from our heart. Sometimes we need to keep forgiving people until the words move from our head to our heart. Many people are afraid to forgive because it feels like if they do, then the one who hurt them will get away with what they did. It's always good to remember that no one ever gets away with anything. The eye of God sees all and knows all. And when we forgive, we release people into God's hands for him to do what only he can do. Remember these powerful words spoken by Jesus. If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. This is what Jesus did for us. He took the debt we owed towards God, for all the sins that we have committed against him, Jesus paid for our sins by dying for us on the cross in our place. Jesus made it possible for us to be completely forgiven. And we can forgive because we have been forgiven. Many consider that the two most famous parables Jesus told are the story of the prodigal son and the parable of the Good Samaritan. Today our focus is on the parable of the Good Samaritan. This story goes all the way back to a question Jesus was asked by a lawyer. Luke wrote, One day a lawyer came up to Jesus and asked him, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Luke tells us, that the question was not as honest as it appears, because by his own admission, the lawyer wanted to test Jesus. Many people try to test or trap Jesus, but that's never a good idea, because Jesus is always aware of the motives of persons who ask him questions. Jesus wisely answered the lawyer's question with another question. He asked, what is written in the law? How do you read it? Luke chapter 10, verse 26. The lawyer replied, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. The lawyer's question, or the lawyer's answer, combined two important statements from the before books. The first part he took from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might. And the second part he took from Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 18, which says, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replied by saying, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Luke chapter 10, verse 28. And this is where the lawyer's test comes in. You see, the rabbis defined neighbors as fellow Jews, and not as the rest of the people of the world, and especially not Samaritans. If the lawyer had simply accepted Jesus' response, we might have never heard the parable of the good Samaritan. But the lawyer would not leave Jesus alone. Because as we have already heard, he was trying to trap Jesus. So he asked a question that led to Jesus exposing the heart of this lawyer. 
The lawyer unwisely asked, who is my neighbor? Luke chapter 10, verse 29. To answer that question, Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan. He said a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, stripped him, and beat him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And now by chance a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, so likewise a Levite. When he came to the place where he saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denera and gave it to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more he needs, I will repay you when I come back. Luke chapter 10, verse 30 through 35. In the story, Jesus emphasizes that the traveler was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jerusalem is about 2,400 feet above sea level, and Jericho is about 800 feet below sea level. The dangerous journey from Jericho twists uphill through the Judean desert for 17 miles, more than 3,000 feet, before finally reaching Jerusalem. As one who's made the journey from Jericho to Jerusalem many times, I can tell you that it is hot, dangerous, and difficult even with modern transportation. In that day, traveling that road alone was to be avoided if it was at all possible. Not only did Jesus point out that the merchant was traveling down the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, but the priest and the Levite were also traveling down the road, that same road from Jerusalem to Jericho. That's an important part of understanding this story. Sometimes teachers suggest that the priest and the Levite could not help the robbed man because they were on their way to the temple and they could not defile themselves. And if the man were dead, and it would only be a matter of time before he did die, they would become unclean for two weeks and then they would not be able to serve in the temple. The problem is, is that the priest and the Levi were not going to the temple. They were on their way home. They had already completed their service. They could have helped the man if they chose to. They simply did not want to get involved. As the story continues, Jesus said that a Samaritan whom the Jews disliked very much had compassion on that Jewish man and stopped to care for him. The Samaritan had eyes to see what the religious leaders failed to see. He saw the man. He cared for the man by rubbing oil on his wounds, bandaged up his wounds, and he gave him something to drink and transported him to the nearest inn. The Samaritan gave the man compassion, care, and cash. He left the man in the hands of the innkeeper with enough money to take care of him until he could return. This Samaritan was a remarkable person. He overcame prejudice to help someone in need. Then Jesus turned to the lawyer and asked him a question he did not see coming. Jesus asked of him, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell amongst robbers? Luke chapter 10, verse 36. Reluctantly, the lawyer said, the one, I suppose, who showed him mercy. Notice that the lawyer could not even say the word Samaritan. Then Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Luke chapter 10, verse 37. The story of the Samaritan has an unexpected twist. It starts off by the lawyer asking, who is my neighbor? 
but it ends by forcing the lawyer to ask a much deeper and important question, what kind of neighbor am I? Jesus is still asking people to consider that question. What kind of neighbor are you? Do you love people who only think like you and look like you? Or have you learned to love people who don't look like you and don't think like you? In another teaching, Jesus emph emphasized those whom he wanted his followers to be neighborly towards. He invited us to have compassion towards people who are hungry, thirsty, strangers, who need clothing, and who are in prison. Before we leave this parable, let's remind ourselves of the question that began this whole conversation in the first place. Remember, it began by the lawyer asking Jesus, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Now, Jesus gave a very clear answer to this question when he met with a Pharisee by the name of Nicodemus. Jesus said to him, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John chapter 3, verse 16. Jesus said the reason God sent him to earth was to die for our sins so that we could be forgiven and receive the gift of eternal life. All we have to do is receive what Jesus did for us. The lawyer asked, what must I do? Jesus pointed out, it's not enough about doing enough to earn eternal life. It is about accepting what Jesus has already done for us. Jesus said, as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. John chapter 1, verse 12. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, it is a picture of what Jesus came to do. He came to rescue people who have been attacked, robbed, and left for dead. Jesus has compassion for what has happened to you. He is present to pour the oil of Holy Spirit into your wounds, to bind up your broken heart. He is prepared to pay for your soul to be restored. You are sick. He has the power to heal you right now. We invite you to receive Jesus as your Savior today. Say to him, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me in my place. Come, Holy Spirit, Fill me with your presence, heal my body, and give me the gift of eternal life that you promised. You just prayed with me. Tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Next week, we'll continue studying the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.